The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. In problem one, we're asked to evaluate a definite integral, and this is going to be our introduction to doing problems using integration by parts. So integration by parts is the first method you learn in this class. So what you might recognize by looking at this integral is you know that you need to use integration by parts because substitution uh, that you learned in calc at the end of Calc 1 would not help you solve this integral. Because remember with regular substitution, what you're trying to find is something in the function where its derivative is also in the function. The derivative of ln x would be 1 over x. You don't have a divided by x uh, in this function or any x's on the denominator, so that's not going to work. And if you use this, this ln is not going to go anywhere because the derivative of x squared is not related to ln. So any regular substitution is not going to help you out in this. You have to use integration by parts. So remember for integration by parts, we need to choose two parts of the function to be the u dv and then we just follow a formulaic approach. So one thing that's good to remember here is this acronym L-I-A-T-E. So what that stands for is log inverse trig algebraic trig and exponentials. So log as you can see, this is a mirror image. You have log, exponential, inverse trig, trig functions, and then algebraic functions. Algebraic functions are just all sorts of polynomials, powers of x, anything regular like that. So what this tells you is if anything more to this side should be your u, and anything more to this side should be your dv. So if you have two parts of a function, whichever one's further to the left, that's the one you generally want to call your u. Whichever one's further to the right, that's what you would want to call your dv. So, in this case, we have a log and an algebraic function. So we definitely want the log to be the u. That's always what you would choose for the u. Then we're going to choose the rest, our algebraic function, to be our dv. Remember that the dv always takes the dx with it. So now you switch these to get du and v. Well, the derivative of ln 5x would be 1 over 5x times 5, in other words, just 1 over x. The dx is here now because you have a du there. And the antiderivative of x squared would be x cubed over 3. So now with integration by parts, remember you always follow the formula. The integration of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So we had our u dv set up there already. Now we just need to follow this formula. So u times v, we get uh, x cubed over 3 times ln of 5x minus the integral of v du. v times du is going to be x cubed over 3 times 1 over x dx. You can see here, one of these x's will cancel. We just get x squared. The integral of x squared over 3 is now a simple integral where you don't have to do anything special. So what we end up getting here is x cubed over 3 ln 5x. So the integral of x squared would be x cubed, or the antiderivative, sorry, would be x cubed over 3. And we already had a 3 there, so this is going to be x cubed over 9. Remember that this was a definite integral the whole time. I didn't bother writing it continually on all of these. But so now that we have this, we need to evaluate this uh, from 2 to 4. So of course, this is back just to doing, like in Calc 1, definite integrals. You always plug in the upper bound first, subtract the lower bound. So let's just do that real quick. If you plug in 4 here, 4 cubed is going to be 64. So we get 64 over 3 ln 20. We have 5 times 4 in there, minus 64 over 9, minus now what we get when we plug in 2. So we're going to get 8 over 3, 
ln two, five, ln of five times two, so ln ten minus two cubed over nine eight over nine. Uh, lastly, there's a couple of different things that we can, you know, try to simplify a little bit here. Mainly just the uh, over nine parts you can combine. So let's just say this is 64 over 3. You can also simplify these LNs a little bit, but it's not going to really help you write it any more concisely. So 64 over 3 LN 20 minus 8 over 3 LN 10. So lastly, we have minus 64 over 9 plus 8 over 9. So that's going to give us negative 56 over 9. And that would be our definite integral. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.